All right, hi there again. My name is Trevor Page, and I am the instructor and founder of the JavaVideoTutorials.net website. Today I'm going to teach a, a short lesson regarding the if statement. Now the if statement is something that is known as a control structure. Okay, this is something that is uh, very common amongst all programming languages. It's not specific to the Java programming language, but the specific syntax that goes along with the if statement is specific to the Java language. So what I'm going to do is just dive right in and talk about how you go about creating an if statement. So here's how you do it. The if statement is uh, essentially made up of three parts. The first part is the keyword if, which is actually very common amongst most pro programming languages. They use the if keyword to signify the if control structure. And then inside of the actual control structure, we will have the condition. Okay, I'm just going to mark that with a uh, comment for now. And then inside is where the actual uh, code will execute. So the code will uh, execute. I should say this code will execute if the condition evaluates to true. Okay, so that is the, the, the key thing about an if statement, an if control structure, is that the condition will be evaluated uh, at runtime. So by the time the code uh, comes down and hits the if statement, um, it will look at the condition inside of the round brackets and evaluate it. So if it evaluates to true, then it will come inside of the if statement's um, scope, which is defined by these two curly brackets, and it will execute the code. So if the code inside of the if statement evaluates to false, it will not execute the code inside of the scope of the if statement. So I'm going to signify this by creating two things. I'm going to do a system out and say uh, the or we are now inside the if statement. And I'll do a system out saying we are now outside the if statement. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see here, we still have a compilation error. It's saying that there is uh, an expression expected after the uh, round bracket. So that means that we need, actually need to include an actual condition. So, what do I mean by condition? Well, I mean we need something that will actually evaluate to true or false, okay? So what I can do is, my simple example is using something like the age variable. So I'm going to create an age, I'm going to say age equals 20, and I, then I will say if the age is, let's say, uh, greater than 20, then we will execute the code inside of the if statement. So, what do you think is going to happen here? We have an integer, which is just a whole number, uh, and we are going to name it age, that's the name of the variable is age, and we're going to set it equal to 20. And we're going to say if the age is greater than 20, then we will execute the code inside of the if statement. And then we'll flow outside of the if statement. So since I'm setting age equal to 20, this should evaluate to false, because is 20 greater than 20? No. 20 is greater than or equal to 20, but it's not greater than 20. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this code, and let's see what the output is. So, you see here in the console at the bottom, we are now outside the if statement. So you'll see that it did not execute the code inside of the if statement, and therefore it did not execute the system out print line code that I've written here, um, so it never outputted it to the console. So now if I make one change and say if the age is greater than 19, what do you think is going to happen? Well, since I'm setting age equal to 20, age now is, it's saying is 20 greater than 19. And what do you think the answer is to that question? Let's run it and find out. There you go. So now it says we are now inside the if statement and we are now outside the if statement. So the code has flowed from top to bottom. It's hit the if statement. It's evaluated this to be true because remember age of course is set to be tw uh, 20 and therefore 20 is greater than 19. So this evaluates to true. It goes inside of the if statement which is defined by the scope which is the curly brackets and then it flows outside. Now there's one thing that we can do here to also modify the if statement control structure. We can do something called else. Okay, So now we've modified it to be if and else. So if I move this line of code to be inside of the scope of the else statement, what's going to happen? What happens is it executes the if, 
if this statement evaluates to true, it will execute the code inside of the if statement. That still holds true. But now it will not execute anything in the else structure because the code will only choose one of these paths. If the if statement here evaluates to true, it only executes this one and skips the else. If the if statement in here, the condition evaluates to false, and it does not execute this code, then it will flow into the else structure and execute this code, okay? So, I should probably change this to say we are now inside the else statement, okay? See the difference? The if statement, the else statement. So now let's run this. So remember what happened before. We had both outcomes printing inside the console. And now let's run this with our else statement added. And you see that it says we are now inside the if statement, but it did not go inside of the else statement. Okay? So now let's change this back to be 20. So now this is going to evaluate to false. And let's run it again. So now you see that it is now inside of the else statement. Now to prove to you what it is that's going on, let's put another system out and say we are now outside the if else statement. And let's run this again to show how the code flows. So you see, age is equal to 20, therefore 20 is not greater than 20, so it does not execute this code, it goes into the else. And then it just continues on going and running the application as normal once it's exited the if else structure. So it says we are inside the else statement. We are now else outside the if else statement. So it executes this line of code and this line of code. And again, I can change the age and say, uh, is age greater than 19? So now I'm switching it to say that it will execute this part of the code. Let me run as. And you see it says we are now inside the if statement okay so now we're executing inside of this code so that's sort of the uh, the structure that you can use with if and else statements now there is one more thing that i can do here to add to this if else uh control structure and that is the else if condition okay so i can actually say else if age is greater than 10 then we can do another system out and say uh, we are now inside the else if statement, okay? So what's going to happen here is uh, with control structures inside of pretty much any programming language and especially inside of the Java programming language, when you have an if, else if, else control structure, the code will only flow, will only choose to flow inside of one of these statements, okay? So if this one evaluates a true, it will go in and execute the code inside of the brackets, and then it will skip all the other else ifs as, as well as else's inside of this control structure. That's just the way it is. If it doesn't execute this one, if it, this condition is evaluates to false, and it, this next one evaluates a true, it will go inside of these, uh, the scope of this else if statement, which is here, and skip everything else. And, of course, at the end, if both of these evaluate to false, then by default it will always go into the last part, which is the else statement, and execute this line of code. Okay? So, let's see what we can do here. Well, when we run int age equals 20, we know that 20 is greater than 19, so it should go in and execute this line of code. Let's see if that's true. Let's run it, and we see that we are now inside the if and we are now outside of the else if statement. So it goes into here and it goes into here naturally. So fair enough, let's change the age to now be, let's say 15, then what happens? Let's run this and see what we get. We are now inside of the else if statement and now we are outside of the if else statement. So we see that it skips this because this is obviously evaluates to false. 15 is not greater than 19, so it skips this and goes to the next condition. This condition is 15 greater than 10. Yes, it is. So this evaluates a true and we go inside of here. And of course, we do not therefore execute this line of code because we've already chosen one route to go inside of based on the conditions in the if or else if statements. Okay. And then finally, we can change the age to be, let's say, I don't know, five and run this again. And you see that it goes inside of the else statement. So 5 is not greater than 19, so it skips this. 5 is not greater than 10, so it skips this, and therefore it goes into the else structure and runs the 
uh, code inside of there. So there you go. There's a quick little tutorial uh, regarding how if, else if, and else statements work inside of Java. Um, and, uh, and hopefully you've taken a lot from this and now you can understand how to uh, create your own programs using your control structures. All right. So until next time, this is Trevor Page and I am inside of the javavideotutorials.net website and hope to see you there. Take care.